My name is Dave Dawson and I'm the coordinator of the Engineering and Computer Technology Department Information Technology Program here at the University of West Florida. The kinds of jobs that people get with the degree that we award uh, generally run in the areas of information technology directors or director of operations, systems administrators. Uh, people uh, manage the IT strategy for large organizations. Uh, there's a tremendous range of flexibility in the in the field. Uh, of course, IT has changed quite a bit from uh, the old days. In the old days, people uh, did computers as something in addition to what they did for their job. But now, in most cases, computers are people's jobs, and the networks that support those things are very important. The, the people that graduate from this program are trained to uh, think strategically about information technology. And rather than becoming a passive service provider in the organization where they simply respond to the demands of the organization, the, the folks from this program, when they go out and begin their careers, they become the people that the organization turns to to figure out ways to exploit technology, to bend technology to the purposes of the organization, to confer some sort of competitive advantage over their, uh, the other people in the, in the field. And so they, they play a very important role. The other part of that, that equation is that because they become important to the organization strategically, they also tend to be a little safer when the, um, the economy ebbs and flows. Uh, they, our objective is to get folks out of those entry-level jobs in the, in the computer end of the business and into the strategic core of the organization where they become members of uh, the, the leadership team. And so, so that's, that's the, the sort of the target group that we want our people to prepare to be. The kinds of courses that students take in this kind of program are, are very broad and they're also very flexible. Uh, you will, of course, you'll, you'll see the standard things. You're going to take some programming languages. You're going to take some uh, networking technology classes. And the technology is always the underlying uh, thrust of the, of the program. So you, you have a, a a good focus on the specific kinds of technologies, networking, uh, networking operations, uh, the, uh, how do you uh, generate a request for proposals and drive a project from beginning to finish the project management piece. Uh, so you have those, those fundamental classes that everyone uh, takes. But you have a lot of flexibility in, in these types of programs because IT is a very heterogeneous uh, field, the, the, the concerns of someone who manages the IT systems in a large uh, medical facility are quite different than the concerns for someone who manages the IT infrastructure for a uh, movie production studio, for instance. And so you have, you have a very broad range of skill sets that are, are necessary. And so you have to sort of develop a, a, an idea of the direction that you want to go and start finding courses that support that, uh, probably about halfway to two-thirds of the way through your program, you really want to start start honing in on those specific kinds of technologies or that area of emphasis. Another very common uh, path for people in IT to take is to uh, supplement their, their, uh, their technology courses with uh, business classes, and that's, that's very, very important these days. Uh, it's, it's very important for people who become IT professionals, particularly in the leadership roles, to understand the 
things that are driving the organization, their concerns, their their constraints, their 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 focus, the way that they measure things, those are all extremely important. And and that's why uh, in our particular program, for instance, we we also require that you take an ethics class because ethics is a is a very big issue in um, in this field. Uh, we we also require that you take a management class, a, a basic management plan class, and then we we also uh, lay over all of that three big focuses. The one of the focuses is on project management. The idea of conceiving a project, determining what the issues are, figuring out the steps to actually define what it is that you want to accomplish with your project, and then driving that project all the way from writing the request for proposals that the other contractors bid on to, to create the 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 project and get it started all the way through to the end to measuring whether the project did what you said it did. Uh, the other thing is complex problem solving. The reason that we have you take uh, two programming languages is not so much that we want you to become expert programmers, uh, but that you get lots of exercise in solving complicated problems. You develop uh, methodologies and strategies for breaking down complicated problems into small things that you can solve a piece at a time and then put it all together. Uh, so complex problem solving is another piece. The, the third piece is small group communication. Uh, you will never work on a technology project by yourself. You will always be working in a team. Many times you'll be working with people that are not even physically in the same place where you are. And so you're going to have to develop methods for communication. Uh, and there's actually two halves of that job. There's communicating within your pro your project group to con to figure out what people are doing and to communicate what has to be done to your team, and then also communicating outside to the rest of the organization often very complicated technological problems for whom technology is not necessarily a burning passion. Uh, and, and so your job is to phrase these complicated technological issues in terms that are relevant to making good business decisions. And that's a very important part of the, the, the process. And so we have classes that, that focus on that quite a bit also. Uh, a lot of people come into information technology from other disciplines. It's very rare that someone starts out coming out of high school deciding that they want to go to an, an IT degree because they're not very commonly known. Uh, most people will, will gravitate towards computer science because it has the word computer in it and it's, it seems like a logical place to go for these kinds of skills. But they get two years into the program and they discover that the computer science uh, degrees are really focused on things within the box, we say. The, you know, they're focused on uh, programming and application development, software engineering those kinds of issues, and there's not so much of an em emphasis on the, the larger systems and putting those systems to work in the context of a big organization. And so we have people coming in from computer science to information technology because they, they discover that this is where our focus is. A lot of people come in from business as well. A lot of people start out uh, in a business degree and then they, they take an, uh, an IT-related class while they're in their business program and discover that they're, they have an affinity for it and, and come migrate into our programs. We also have a lot of people that are coming in from our um, from the military that uh, have uh, been exposed to technologies while they're in the military and are now back in school and are getting a degree in this field. Um, I think that you'll you'll also find well one of the things that's a little unusual about information technology programs is they typically have uh, an internship or some sort of capstone experience at the end that uh, that you can do. One of the things that I'd like to speak very frankly about uh, in considering the, the kind of path that you're going to take in your college career is to think about the, the market itself. In this market, in the IT market, uh, there is a very strong focus on professional certifications. Those are very, very important in the, in the job world here because there are very specific types of technologies that are very important and that are business critical to organizations and they need experts in those specific kinds of things. But those kinds of certifications are typically not things that you'll find in a university environment. Those things many times you'll find, uh, you'll find them at, uh, 
at local community colleges, the, the state colleges, and in, in actual commercial uh, education institutions. The kinds of uh, certifications I'm talking about, things like the Microsoft certifications, the MCSA or the MCSE, or the Cisco networking certifications, the CNA. Uh, in some cases, uh, particularly if you're working for the federal government, they like for you to have some security uh, credentials like the CISSP. Uh, certificate. And so the thing that I always tell people that are interested in this program the, is that the degree itself is just not enough. You're, you're going to need a good suite of professional certifications that are related to the area that you want to focus your, your efforts in, but and then also the degree. And I always say the the uh, the certifications will get you the interviews, but the degree will get you the job ultimately, and also allow you to progress through the through the organization. And it's a, it's really a pretty good strategy to to get those certifications very early while you're while you're young, and you can you can get these things very easily locally. Get those professional certifications. And then get an entry level job in the industry somewhere. Because one of the things that we know about information technology organiz related organizations is that they invest very heavily in their employees. And so a good strategy is to use the certifications to get that entry level job and then get the organization to pay for your college. That's a, that's a very common method. I, I'd say uh, probably about 50 to 60 percent of the people in the program that, that I teach are people that have done exactly that. They, they got uh, excellent professional certifications, they got ASs or AASs, and then, then uh, came in to uh, a, a, a job somewhere. And after they've been in the job for three or four years, they, they started taking advantage of the professional development opportunities that the organization offered and, and went back to school to get their degree so that they can advance in the organization. So that's a very common path. It's not the only path. There are, there are a lot of other methods to, to doing this, but I do really strongly recommend that you, you have that full complement of credentials. You want to have the, the, um, the certifications, and you want to narrow those down. You you want to narrow those down into specific areas where you intend to, to focus. If you're going to go into network operations, then you probably want to be looking at, at the Cisco certifications. If you're going to go into systems administration in a large organization that's a, a Windows-based, for instance, and a lot of uh, operations are Windows-based, then you'll, you'll get something like the MCSA or the MCSE. Uh, but that's the sort of intelligence and research that you have to develop as you're thinking about what you want to do ultimately for a career, finding out what what the what the uh, requirements are for the the people that do these kinds of jobs. And it doesn't hurt to to visit uh, organizations and just ask their IT people how they got in their job, what what path they followed, and what kind of programs they have for professional development.